Hi there, welcome to the RPS project. Today I'm going to look at DC power connectors. You know the sort. A little socket like this. It goes in your circuit, it's where your connector plugs in. You know, it just plugs in, got your power, uh, and there you go. Plug it in. You know, one of those wall socket things you, you plug in, switch mode or all these days. <coughs> um, but you look at it and you go, well, I've got two connectors here, positive and ground, but this thing has got three pins on it. Why three? What do I need the third one for? Well, I'm going to have a look and uh, see what that third pin is actually used for, or at least what it used to be used for and what I can use it for now. Okay, so let's do a quick diagram and um, see what I'm talking about. Now the these sockets have three pins. They're usually drawn uh, something like that, it's a big square, and then you've got oh, how do they do it now? It's it's somewhat like this anyway. It, it's something like this. It doesn't not necessarily exactly like this. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to draw it like that. It's the easiest way I can think of. It represents what you have. You have the, obviously, the socket from this side. You'd have it. You'll find a um, data sheet. It'll, uh, it'll show you exactly what they mean. But what you do have is three points. One, two, and three. So you'll have your, let's say, positive there negative there and then you've got this bottom one which is the third one which is also a negative because these two are effectively connected together but it's it's this fact that this thing is movable it it, it moves when the socket's put in so sorry about the drawing it's a bit crude but uh, hopefully you get the idea that there are three connectors and this bottom one is connected to the negative, but not always, because when you put the socket in, this, th this one is disconnected from the negative. So how can we use that? Well, basically what you've got is, in the old days, you would have had a center positive. So this would have been positive, and that would have been negative, sorry, center negative. We're in a centre negative, so the ground is there. So all grounds come to this point. But if you had a battery, then when you plug in your power supply, you want to disconnect the battery. And the idea was is that you would disconnect this one, which would be connected to the positive of the battery, because this part and this part connect together. So you take the one lead out to your, your circuit, and then this one would come from your battery. So that when you plug it in and have power coming in, this would be disconnected. So the positive from the battery would then be disconnected from the whole of the circuit. It's very simple. Now can you still use that? Well, yeah, because really you could take this easily and um, that being centre positive, effectively you can just have the negative side of the battery connected and then when you put the power supply in, you disconnect the negative side of the battery. So the battery is sort of taken out of circuit. It's not the best, it's not ideal, it does, it's a bit janky I suppose, but in concept it does the same thing. So let's put it on the, um, on the workbench and uh, see if I can make it happen. So here we go, I've got this uh, set up on, uh, on my workbench here. I've got the socket, which is this one, and I found that... Um, this connector on this side is the um, positive, this middle one is the ground, and then this third one is the one that gets disconnected when you put the, the, the socket in, the power supply. So I've wired it up so that 
on here, you can see I've got this one wired up, this one here is the positive, that's the negative, so that is my permanent connection on the load. And then my battery, 9 volt job, comes in and connects here. So that as far as the positive side goes, I've got my battery, I've got a lead here. This side of the battery will go into my load. It's a 1 meg ohm resistor. Can't really see that on, on there, but I've got a 1 meg ohm standard quarter watt resistor. It draws very little current. <coughs> and it'll go through there and come back. But then because when there's no socket, when there's no plug in the socket, the circuit will connect to this wire and go back to the, to the battery, which is brilliant. Um, so let's demonstrate that. Now I've got a multimeter across there. And I'm going to do is just connect up the battery. And actually you've got that nice strong 9 volt battery there. 9.57 volts, that's a nice battery. Um, and yeah, there you go, it, it just works. You've got 9 volts going through this 1 mega ohm resistor. Now, if I was to plug a power supply into there, now this one obviously is just a, so just a, um, a plug, and I'm going to put this into the socket, and effectively it should disconnect the 9 volts. There you go, there's no voltage now. There's no voltage on the circuit because this lead here on this side has effectively been disconnected from this one. So the return circuit to the battery doesn't exist anymore. The battery's not there. Take it back out. There you go, 9 volts. Now, obviously this is, in, in my mind, the concept is that you can put in another power supply, like a plug-in power supply. This is a connect cable connector from a 12 volt, let's turn that on, a 12 volt switch mode plug-in plug top power supply that everybody uses for everything this is 12 volts um, I've got some connectors to prove that well I'll prove it now when I plug this in because I've got 9 volts there and in theory when I put this in it'll change to 12 volts get in there there you go 12 volts but the battery is now disconnected there's no there's no current flowing from the battery suppose I could do a bit of a change on the setup to, to show the current flow so you can see that there is no current flow when I connect in. Of course when I take it back out we go back to 9 volts because it's just got the battery. Brilliant. Let me just set this up so I can show the current flow. So now I've got two multimeters. This one here is now looking at the voltage um, and this one is going to look at the current. So if I connect up this connector here which is the battery to the circuit I could put a switch in there and it worked better. We've got our uh, nine and a half volts, and I've got what's well, a really tiny amount. It's very small current because it is a one mega ohm resistor, as I said. Um, what's that? That's 18 microamps. 18 microamps. But it's all I need. It just shows that there is a current flow in there. So if I now plug in my 12 volts the current should disappear because the battery is no longer in circuit and all the current 12 volts no current so the battery is effectively disconnected from the circuit and our power is now coming from the 12 volt supply brilliant absolutely works fine so yeah the third so third pin on these sockets you can use if you want to have a power supply that can have a battery or a plugged up power from you know from your mains like so there you go as long as you don't try to put AC through it because that will ruin your day brilliant marvellous works 12 volt 9 volt 12 volt 9 volt brilliant does just what I want it to so there you have it if you're planning a project that requires you to have a battery or at least you want it to have a battery and the capability of being able to plug in a power supply so you don't run the battery completely flat. You know, if you've got the ability to plug this in somewhere, why not? Save the battery for when you really need it. Um, just use one of these sockets. And they come in a variety. There's another one I've got. 
you know, it's got three pins on it, works in the same manner as this one. Um, so yeah, that's what they were designed to do. They were designed so you could have a battery and a power supply. And of course, there's no real additional cost to that because, I mean, if your idea on your project was to put in a battery and have power supply, then you'd be using all the components anyway. You haven't got to buy additional components. I mean, you could do it fancy and have it with, say, like uh, um, some sort of specialist sensing device and sensing circuit, and it knows that when you've got battery power, when you've got the mains plugged in, you know, uh, but then you've got to have a whole new circuit and all lots of messing around to make sure it all works and functions correctly. Whereas this way, you just got it, it just works because it was already designed that way decades ago. So, yeah, go with it. I think that's just a, a really simple cheap solution. So that's what I'm going to do with some of my projects when I want to use battery and I've got a couple that I want to have battery but also want to be able to put mains in. Brilliant. I think that'll work just fine. Anyway, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you do, you know what to do. Subscribe and I'll come on to welcome. See you next time.